I will now hand over the mic to Bronson Brown DeVos for the project updates. Bronson is a postdoc at the University of Göttingen. He is uh, working on the technical side of the Scripta Cumbranica Electronica project, which is attempting to build a digital infrastructure for the work on Dead Sea Scrolls. We're very excited to have him here. It's a, a very exciting project that promises to be very helpful for those of us who work in this field. Uh, Bronson, uh, we look forward to hearing more about what you're doing right now. Let me uh, share my screen too, so we can uh, enjoy this a little bit more. Okay. I hope you can see my screen well enough. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Drew, for the nice introduction. And thank you, Milan and everybody else from the, the team putting together this conference. It's really nice to come and join in and meet with all these uh, fellow geeks who enjoy <laughs> both technical things, humanities, ancient Judaism, ancient documents. Uh, it's really great. So I have the pleasure of being part of a large international research project uh, called Scripta Cumranica Electronica. And uh, I have up here our website. So you can, if you wish to, go to cumranica.org and see all the stuff we have written. Because I'm going to go rather quickly through this because I know we're short on time. And also, I want to get right to the paleography stuff um, without going too in depth into every facet of our project, but just to give you like a little overview of what we're working on. So our project involves um, the University of Göttingen, which has been working for many years, almost 20 years, on a dictionary of Qumran Aramaic and Hebrew. This is a um, Qumran Wörterbuch project here in Göttingen. And in the course of that, they've curated wonderful transcriptions of all of the documents. So they have a really great um, textual database, including morphological analysis and scholarly um, connections to scholarly literature, parallels, different variant readings and things like that. So they have that large database here. And the, the goal was to bring this together with the brand new imaging um, project. I think of it as brand new because I was a master's student when Panina came over to Brandeis University and started talking about it in 2013 or something. It's now a little bit more mature than brand new, but it's wonderful to see it coming to, to fruition. And what we wanted to do was kind of bring this image database from the IAA together with the textual database at Göttingen. And um, in, in the course of this, we also involve um, help from computer science team led by Nachum Dershowitz at Tel Aviv University, and also humanities scholars in Haifa University, Yonatan Ben Dove, um, Daniel Schokel Ben Ezra is in France, but he's kind of adopted into uh, Yonatan's team. And just to show you how dizzying it can be to keep track of everyone. We have um, three PIs, Reinhard Kratz here in Göttingen, Jonathan Ben Dove in um, now Tel Aviv, who was Haifa when we started, and Nachum Dershowitz in Tel Aviv, he's now retired, um, and Ingo Kotzieper, who's the head of our IT stuff here in Göttingen. But of course, we partnered directly with um, the Israel Antiquities Authority, so that started with Panina Shore, now it's Joe Uziel, um, and Anyway, there's a lot of people here, so I encourage you to go through and take a look and you'll see probably some names you know. Um, and again, you can see the complex relational map <laughs> between all of us. And I think it's not a digital humanities conference unless you have some sort of graph um, image to show people. So I guess that somehow counts as a graph. Also, you can find on our website the many publications that we put out. Um, and finally, in the intro up to this, I just want to make clear what our project is providing. And that is we are providing web accessible tools to, to um, get the data from the Kumra Vertebuch and the Israel Antiquities Authority's images. And these tools allow you to find that information, join it together, label it, um, format it in ways that allow you to share it with other people. And we'll get into that more in depth, but it really is a virtual research environment that allows uh, massive amounts of collaboration 
um, and other features. And this is based upon online web accessible API so that if you don't like our front ends, you don't like our web application, you can write your own or you can use a Jupyter notebook and um, just get data straight from our API and do whatever you want with it if you're a little bit more um, inclined in that way. So let's get to it. Our code is open source. You can take anything you want. It's MIT licensed. Any code you like, you can take it and throw it in your project. Any data that you like, it's CC by SA. So you need to follow those rules. So a brief overview here. Basically, like I said, we have a lot of images and these sorts of images here should be pretty familiar to anybody who's worked in Dead Sea Scrolls in the last decade, or half a decade at least. Um, and that's what we start with. We have all the brand new images from the IAA. And one of the first goals that we do is we want to isolate each fragment from all the other junk that we only care about when we want to know about measurements and color calibration and such. Um, which is probably not you guys often. <laughs> um, so what we do is each image has a coordinate system, zero, zero at the top left, and you go this way, the numbers get higher, the x-axis, and then the y-axis, they get higher as they go down, which is confusing, but that's how the world works um, a lot of times, it's, at least the web works that way. So you can map a, a number of points, each number of points to create a polygon outline and this really defines this new entity as something that's computationally accessible now, finally, that wasn't accessible before. And as you can see, I, you can pull it apart. And what it looks like is this is not this one here. This is just a simple thing. It's just a bunch of numbers in a string, but they define a path that you walk around in the image. Once you have that, for the one image, we start with the matte color image as our master image. Then you can, for instance, find that same artifact, maybe a fragment in an old pan image. This is the same thing. So up here, it's beautiful, it's in color, and it's facing the right direction. Uh, we're very happy with that when it happens. Here it's sideways and it's, you know, infrared. So you don't see, you see the letters, you don't see much else. Uh, but nevertheless, you can map that region and simply tell the computer this region here equals this region here. And when you have that, you can do a linear transform so that the two can be matched up together. So this allows you to take any number of images and correlate them one to the other and define that this fragment has a history of imaging and here is the whole history going back in time to the PAMs and anything that I mark on this newest one can be correlated to what happened in the oldest one theoretically. And here you see for instance I can crop out the piece and go back and forth between the PAM and the new color image. Why is this important? Because the next thing we're going to do, which is important for you guys here, is start marking the letters. And so the letters are related to the outline that we've drawn. So if I mark a letter on here, if I have a picture that I found in, you know, from 50 years ago, I can go to the same exact coordinates and see what that letter looked like 50 years ago. Or 50 years from now, when the IAA images these things again, I can apply the same thing to their new image 50 years from now and see how it's changed between those two. Um, and then, yes, I've given it away. The last thing that's very important with this, it allows us to take an image that might have multiple um, fragments on it and cut them into pieces. Here you can see this piece here, this piece here, this is the same image, this is a different image. But in fact, see how this little piece is joined directly to the tongue or whatever you want to call it of that. In reality, that's not where it goes. And you can see when I put them together, instead of being situated there, this piece sits here. And this little piece sits in the middle and it really is a direct join and the letters span multiple artifacts. So this type of complex referencing system, which seems overloaded and um, tiresome, is really nice because it allows us to correlate everything together 
and to break things without touching the manuscripts. That's super important. Like we shouldn't go to the Israel Museum and start ripping things apart. That's not good for life. We can do it um, digitally. And the record of everything that is done is kept throughout. Um, as you can imagine, I'm not gonna get into this, but if you reconstruct text, you can just put it in the same coordinate system. Um, and finally, we do have um, recto verso support. So if you're working, for instance, on an epistograph and you've cut out this side, which has its own text on it, you may want to also be able to see the other side, which has different text on it. And again, all the coordinate systems are linked with each other. So you can say, is there ever a case where there's an aleph and then on the back side, there's a race? I guess it's not that close. And you can actually find that, find that out. Um, that can be helpful if you're trying to figure out if you've got bleed through or um, transfer of ink and things like that that we do. So in any event, that's a quick summary. How much time have I taken so far, Drew? I don't know when I started. Yeah, I think it's about time. We've been running a little bit late. So if you've got through okay. important bits, uh, I think we will move on then. Thank you so much. Can I, can I just quickly show the paleography thing and then... Sure. Yeah, quickly. You yeah. have a minute still. Right. So these things you don't care about so much. Uh, but we talked about script charts. And basically, when I've marked all of my text like this, so I have each letter mapped and I've got the regions marked out nicely, then I can simply call it up with my API and I can ask for every base or every Gimel or every Zion. And um, th so this is where we interface with you guys, where I think the project will be beneficial for paleography is it, it's a quick, easy interface to mark all these letters and then collect them. And you can show them also in their context or whatever else you want. So. Um, we're hoping, we're excited to see what will come from this and what um, people will do with it. So anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Bronson. It's really exciting, the project you guys have going on there, and I look forward to seeing everything up and operational and using it a lot in the future.